Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless today officials with the southern baptist convention upheld a decision to expel two of its churches including one of its largest for having women pastors cbs's janet shamley reports conservative delegates also voted that women shouldn't hold any leadership positions in the church the affirmative has it and the motion carries the vote to ban female pastors in SBC churches praised like a Sunday sermon. It puts us all on the same page about what a pastor is and who a pastor is, a biblically qualified man. Members at the annual convention in New Orleans today overwhelmingly favored a constitutional amendment that requires a church, quote, employs only men as qualified pastors. And Saddleback Church is not in friendly cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention. The SBC also refused to reinstate California megachurch Saddleback, expelled in February for ordaining women pastors. Founding pastor Rick Warren made a futile appeal to the almost 13,000 church representatives known as messengers. I'm not asking you to agree with my church. I am asking you to act like a Southern Baptist. Five churches with female pastors have been expelled from membership recently, including Fern Creek Baptist in Louisville, Kentucky. Pastor Linda Barnes Popham failed to get its expulsion overturned as well. This is a sad day for Southern Baptists because they are losing gifted and talented and called women of God as we continue to proclaim the gospel, why they want to get rid of folks like us makes no sense. What does this say to the millions of women in the churches? It says to those women, you are not valued. The votes here in New Orleans are the latest effort to crack down on a perceived liberal shift in the organization. The SBC is the nation's largest Protestant group, but its population has dropped about 9% over the last three years. The word of God proclaims, let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. 1 Timothy 2, 11 and 12. In the church, God assigns different roles to men and women. God, through the Apostle Paul, restricts women from serving in roles of teaching or having spiritual authority over men. This precludes women from serving as pastors over men, which definitely includes preaching to them, teaching them, and exercising spiritual authority over them. God has ordained that only men are to serve in positions of spiritual teaching authority in the church. This is not because men are necessarily better teachers or because women are inferior or less intelligent. It is simply the way God designed the church to function. The Bible is clear on the qualifications for being a pastor. He must not be greedy for money and have a good testimony to the unsaved, as we read in 1 Timothy 3, 1-7. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work, a bishop that must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, Thus, being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Notice that the Apostle Paul used the pronouns he and his, and that a bishop or pastor must be the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband. Scripture clearly teaches that women cannot be pastors. Just wanted to you point that get out. out of here. I'm not the minister. We're going to go in, hear the sermon, and then try and ask questions. Right? But I believe we're all one. All one? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care who you are. I don't care what race, color, creed, what religion you practice. Mm -hmm. We are all one in the body. So do you believe that other religions like Islam, Judaism, do you think yeah. that they could also Nobody go to heaven? 
they could also go to heaven. They're all part of God. You know, it's very arrogant to think that we're the only ones that have that know about God. So you don't think that Christianity uh, is the only religion? That, Not in the way it's been. Listed. It would also be Islam. So you think Islam, Judaism? Everybody. everybody. I love gay people. I love gay people. Ma'am, I love gay people. I love gay people. I do. I do. But there's a difference there between love difference and acceptance. Love. I love them so much, I'm trying to give them eternal life in God. They already have it. They already have it. They already have now, it. If you're going against the Bible and its teachings, they're not going to make it to heaven. That's your That's interpretation. The, she, there's only one interpretation. No, that is that God. Your interpretation. That is God. Then you don't love but Jesus. It doesn't matter, ma'am, what you believe. It doesn't matter what you believe or what I believe. It matters what God believes. As a sign of his coming in the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith, and false teachers would rise up, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away, and betray one another, and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word, as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex, and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3.14-22. through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. 
Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last days Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We're never going to agree. Let's agree to disagree. Okay. You'll never That's convince. eternal life right there, man. I can't I, do I'm that. I'm in eternal life. I can't do that. When, I'm in eternal life. In the book I've of Jeremiah, it, it talks, it honey, talks about honey. false honey. teachers, and I, I fear that I you're a false honor teacher. I beliefs. No, honor ours. I will, I will let you guys. I just, I just fear you guys are, are teaching oh, wrong and leading right. people yeah, to I'm hell. I'm afraid of you because you're causing... You're taking away love from the world. Jesus brought love. I do You're love. I love everyone. Away. I do. I love you everyone. Like <laughs> spreading God's word is not love. That's the ultimate showing of love, man, is spreading God's word. It says go into the world, preach the gospel of creation. You're not doing that. It also, it also says women shouldn't be pastors. It says women should be silent in the church. Just wanted to you point that out. get out of here. I'm not the minister. Gone. This yeah. is a church pushing me. This is yeah, a church that's pushing right. me. I am. I'm no, this is not the church pushing me. I'm not the church. I'm just asking I'm simple questions. Church. I've not rose my voice once. You're, you're, God, and he's, he's assaulting gonna, me now. He, don't touch me, sir. Don't touch me. Don't touch well, me. What are you gonna do? I'll call the police for assault. Oh that's no, what we're I'll calling do. the police I'm right leaving. now. I'm leaving. You're, you're the one that's being assaulted. Calm down, sir. Hi. I mean, you can't call yourself a Christian and then say Islam and Judaism will also inherit the kingdom of God. You can't call yourself a Christian and not believe in the Bible. You can't call yourself a Christian and have gay pride flags outside. Everything this church did, they said that God said not to judge and God doesn't judge. In Ecclesiastes, it says God judges. They're going against the Bible because they don't believe in the Bible. They're spreading people to hell because of their false doctrine. Jeremiah 8.11 For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. What does peace, peace, when there is no peace, mean in Jeremiah 8.11? Jeremiah the prophet proclaimed, the judgment was coming upon Jerusalem. However, Jeremiah was opposed by the king and the priests who did not want to hear his message. False prophets who claimed to speak for God also contradicted Jeremiah's message. Jeremiah proclaimed bloodshed, destruction, and judgment when Babylon conquered Jerusalem. The false prophets, on the other hand, said that the future of Jerusalem looked bright. Jerusalem could look forward to peace, not war. The phrase, peace, peace, when there is no peace, is found in Jeremiah 6.14 as well as Jeremiah 8.11. It is also found in Ezekiel 13.10 and 16. In all four places, it has the same meaning in the same historical context. Jeremiah was like a doctor delivering bad news to his patient, and his diagnosis was, unless drastic measures were taken, the patient would die. However, the false prophets gave a second opinion. Don't listen to Jeremiah, they said. You are going to be just fine. Instead of radical surgery and a drastic change of lifestyle, the priests and false prophets said a light bandage was all that was needed. The following passage is found in Jeremiah 6.13 and 14 and repeated in Jeremiah 8.10 and 11. Because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, Everyone is given to covetousness, and from the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. When the priests and false prophets said, Peace, peace, they were denying that judgment was on the way. They were giving the people false assurances. The explicit assumption is that Jerusalem and Judah had not committed grievous sins and that God was not displeased with them. In fact, according to the false prophets, God was quite happy with his people and wanted to bless them. They promised peace, peace. Unfortunately, their promised peace would not come. The book of Jeremiah bears this out, and in the end, Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon, just as God had said. There are still false prophets and religious leaders today who issue false promises of peace when there is no peace. 
the message of peace and prosperity sells. Some preachers and teachers today say that the Christian life is all about peace and prosperity, but God does not promise that. There are others who ignore or downplay the seriousness of sin and teach that God is not concerned with their behavior. Others deny that eternal judgment awaits the unrepentant sinner, even though God has promised just the opposite. These are modern day examples of false prophets promising peace when there is no peace. Paul declares to Timothy, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. People like to hear good news, and they do not want to hear that God's judgment is coming. The watchmen of our time have the job of delivering that bad news. God bore witness against the people to whom Isaiah was sent to minister, calling them rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction, as we read in Isaiah 39. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord. Such people have closed their ears to the word of the Lord and desire to hear only peace, even when there is no peace. They say to God's prophets, Give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things. Prophesy illusions. Stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. As we read in Isaiah 30, 10, and 11, Who says to the seers, Do not see, and to the prophets, Do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get out of the way. Turn aside from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Just as Jeremiah the prophet proclaimed the judgment was coming upon Jerusalem, the watchmen of our time are warning of God's soon coming judgment on a wicked and unrepentant world. Are you listening? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.